What's up, my fellow fly fishers? Graham Ferguson here, host of Fly Casting Colorado. Today, we are going to be discussing dry flies. Dry flies are probably my all-time favorite way to catch fish fly fishing. It is, in my opinion, the most fun, the most exciting, the most exhilarating, like everything that you could possibly want in catching a fish on the fly. Dry flies are pretty much what most people think of when they think of fly fishing, um, but when you think about it, it's m actually mostly nymphing. I catch most of my fish on dry flies personally because I end up using dry flies uh, most of the time and nymphing definitely isn't one of my, I guess you could say, isn't one of my talents. Just hooked myself this worm. I just pushed it through to the barb. So I'm gonna try to pinch the barb and get this fly out of me. For sure. Um, but I mean, I can nymph. I do it sometimes. Uh, it's really an effective way to catch fish if because if there's a fish that's hitting a dry fly, it's gonna be hitting a nymph as well. So nymphing is always a is always one of your best bets when it comes to catching fish. However, I love dry flies. Um, um. But there are a lot of different ways to fish dry flies. I will discuss most of those in this video, uh, which is why I made this video. <laughs> Because um, when I first started fly fishing, there was a lot to cover, and I was just really confused with everything. So hopefully this video clears up a little bit of your dry fly um, questions and stuff like that. With dry flies, uh, when I am fishing a singular dry fly, it is most often, I would say, during a hatch where I can see fish rising and they're hitting a particular bug. This is basically all of your specified patterns and all of your specific stuff like your midges, your BWOs, PMDs, blue duns, stone flies, caddis, uh, pretty much all of that stuff. That's basically... Um, a singular something that I would put in a singular dry fly rig which means I only have one fly on that is the type of fly that I would usually be throwing is a pattern that directly imitates what the fish are feeding on or this isn't always the case when I am 100% certain that fish are feeding on the surface there are a lot of places that fish are just always to hit dry flies no matter what um, and these are some of my favorite places to go because of this but a lot of times the patterns that I will use on a singular dry fly rig when there isn't a particular hatch going on is usually stuff like uh, my spring breaker is a great pattern to go to. It's uh, a really good pattern because it mimics just about everything. It's a really good pattern to use. Another thing that I like to use on a singular dry fly rig for an attractor is a parachute Adams. Uh, the Adams is a really awesome, versatile dry fly. I've caught a lot of fish on it, just fishing it, not in a particular hatch, but just as kind of a dry fly. My preference goes size 18 and below. I prefer to use a parachute Adams. Anything above a size 18, so your size 16 and above, I prefer to use a regular Adams, not the parachute variation. However, you can do either of these kind of mix match that's basic but that's pretty much where my preference line is another fly that i really like to use in a singular dry fly rig would definitely be an elk hair caddis that is a great fly for when there are caddis flies flying around but what i've found is that fish will hit an elk hair caddis even when there isn't a specific caddis hatch going on on different Places there's caddis hatches that are so big, it's like kind of like on the Arkansas, there's the blizzard caddis hatch, which is like millions and millions of caddis flies flying around and just the air is thick with caddis, basically. But that isn't always the case. Uh, most of the caddis hatches that I've fished are just a few caddis here and there kind of flying around on the water and fish will end up hitting those. It is a really great fly to use um, for when you know that there have been caddis around you don't see a specific hatch, but you know that there are caddis and the fish are looking on the surface. The second type of uh, rig I like to use when I'm fishing dry flies is a double dry rig. A lot of times this is when I am searching. This is a searching pattern. 
or not a searching pattern, a searching rig. One of my favorite rigs for this is a parachute Adams or just an Adams, and then uh, about eight to 10 inches behind that, a Griffith snat. And if you guys aren't familiar with what a Griffith snat is, I've used it in a lot of, I've used it in a few of my videos. I believe it is a really, really, really versatile fly. I love it. It, I, it is one of my go-to flies for when I see fish rising. A lot of times I'll throw on a Griffith snat and I'll start catching fish immediately, pretty much. It's super simple. It's peacock hurl and grizzly hackle. Basically, that's it. It mimics everything from your small mayflies, even sometimes really small, like micro stone fly sort of stuff. It's just super buggy looking and fish will take that during a hatch when there's really small stuff. That's basically what the Griffith snat is supposed to be. It's just m imitating really small stuff, like small mayflies, small midges. And then when you start getting into your bigger Griffith snats, that's typically when you start seeing fish hitting that because it uh, mimics a midge cluster. It's like a big juicy cheeseburger for a trout, basically. In the rig that I use with it, mostly with my parachute atoms, or just atoms in general, uh, and then my Griffith snap, I love this rig when I see fish rising, because that covers a wide variety of what the fish could be hitting on, so you know if the fish are hitting on neither of those, you can pretty much always be sure that it's going to be like a BWO, a PMD, or something like that, or like caddis or stuff. Typically in a caddis or stonefly hatch, you'll see the caddis or you'll see the stoneflies flying around. A lot of times, another way I like to use a double dry rig is with a large high floating fly, whether that be a stimulator or my own spring breaker, and then a really small dry fly. So something like even a Griffith snap, parachute atoms, a small BWO dry fly, so that you might not be able to see as well. Uh, and basically your stimulator pretty much acts as a strike indicator for that small. Another of the best ways to fish dry flies is a good old dry dropper rig. I really appreciate this rig because it enables you to fish both water columns, that being surface and subsurface. And if you're not familiar with what a dry dropper is, it is a dry fly, most commonly a high floating, buoyant, and sometimes quite large dry fly, and then you have a uh, leader going down from the dry fly and you have a nymph at the bottom of that. Uh, this is a favorite of mine for fishing dry flies because a lot of times I can get away with nymphing pretty much, but still get to use a dry fly. That's a awesome rig for me. It works really well as a searching, uh, as just like a searching rig. It it just gets the job done a lot. Um, a lot of times you want your dry fly to be very buoyant and um, like high floating. So not a pattern that you can easily sink. So I would never use like something like a Griffith snap in a dry dropper rig as the dry fly. That's just bound for disaster. What I do like to use for dry dropper rigs like that is stuff like stimulators a lot of times. My spring breaker uh, works well for this. Um, uh, a lot of times terrestrials just those patterns are pretty much the best when it comes to dry dropper rigs. Um, my favorite being uh, a hippie stomper or an Amy's Ant. Those are my personal favorite flies to use in a dry dropper rig. Basically the nymph, you want a unweighted nymph because a lot of times if you have a big bead head fly underneath a dry fly, a lot of times that'll end up just sinking the dry fly and then the whole purpose of the rig is just pretty much gone. But basically you can vary the weight of your nymph based on the buoyancy of your dry fly. So if I'm fishing something like a Amy's Ant or a Chubby Chironoble, which is a foam high floating fly, then I will probably be able to fit a bead head underneath that. But if I'm using something like my Spring Breaker, which is slightly less buoyant, I would probably use a unweighted fly. And my favorite nymph to use in, a, in any dry dropper rig has got to be a pheasant tail in either a natural or an olive coloration. Um, depending on the conditions that you're in. Well, I uh, hope this video helped you guys a lot. Uh, I really wish that this there was something like this around when I first started fly fishing. 
Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more awesome tips. And go and check out some of my other videos because, because like, I'm an awesome guy and I produce awesome videos, you know? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned a ton. Pretty much all of the flies that I mentioned in this video are available uh, at the Big Y Fly Company. I will put a link to them in the description. They are a super, super awesome company. They pretty much have everything that you could possibly need fly fishing. They have so they have a huge variety of flies for really, really cheap, and um, I get almost all the flies from them. Um, it they have everything else too. They have fly tying and. Uh, there's a they're a super awesome site and I would really recommend you guys checking them out for all of your other fly fishing needs. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next video.